Yes, people, what is going on? So welcome back to today's YouTube video. Today, we're gonna to be answering a couple of questions that I got on the question box on Instagram. Um, hopefully this won't be too long. I'll try not to ramble, but there are some good questions I think I'll be able to expand on a little bit. And then there's also just some couple, you know, smaller kind of questions, right? So we'll get stuck straight into it. How did you get into bodybuilding? So I suppose I got into bodybuilding kind of like how I got into the gym was very different to how I actually got into bodybuilding. I feel like I got into bodybuilding through going to the gym and then slowly starting to follow other bodybuilders, etc. Um, I don't know what I classify like being into the gym and just training as bodybuilding, even though a lot of people probably would. Like even when I wasn't like bodybuilding per se, still kind of considered myself a little bit of a bodybuilder. Um, like when I was like 17 and I first started going to the gym, I was still like prepping my meals all the time, you know, bringing them with me, kind of living the lifestyle that a bodybuilder would. So I think I, I would have got very into bodybuilding, I suppose, uh, earlier on, or got into what I consider proper bodybuilding um, very early on. But when I first started going to the gym, I was just doing it to just get a little bit bigger, you know, get the six pack, um, build more confidence, etc., etc. But I think within like six months of going to the gym, I kind of stopped doing it for like how I taught other people would look at me or how I thought girls would look at me, etc. And I was more so kind of like doing it because I genuinely like loved it. Like I loved the progression. Um, I loved how it made me like feel, I think like mentally. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how the gym kind of started for me. And then with bodybuilding, I kind of got into it a little bit early, I suppose. When I, when I was following people on YouTube, like fitness wise, it would have been like Matt Ogus, Christian Guzman, like back in the day, they were like the first couple of people that I would have followed, like Rob Lipset, et cetera. But as I started to get like more into like the training side of things and like building my physique and stuff like that, um, I think my first Olympia I watched was maybe in like 2013 and the whole like Kai Green Phil Heat saga was going on at that time and I just loved like Kai Green as a bodybuilder. I loved how he was like very philosophical and like his answers to a lot of questions and stuff and I remember watching all his old like I think Muscle Tech was who he was with at the time or maybe like Muscle Meds or something like that all his like docu-series like videos of like him and then it was like the backstory of his life and how he got into bodybuilding and all that sort of stuff and I thought like oh this is like fascinating and then just seeing like the different level of like discipline and commitment and like application to training that bodybuilders had in comparison to like the Rob Lipset kind of Christian Guzman kind of lifestyle -y kind of a guys that sort of stuff just appealed to me a lot more because I'm a bit of extreme, an extremist. I'm like 100% or nothing. Anytime I ever like want to do something, I just throw absolutely everything into it. Um, and I think that kind of like hardcore kind of extremist aspect of bodybuilding appealed to me more than just like, you know, going to the gym here or there to look good on the beach when you go on holidays. I was just kind of like, no, I want like all the progression. I want to like push my physique as far as I possibly can and all these like bodybuilders that would have popped up on my explore page or whatever I'd see these like incredible like sick physiques and um, fellas with like six packs like just like shredded like quads and stuff like that and I always thought to myself even when I was like very young like 17 18 I was like someday like oh you want to look like that I was like I don't care what I have to do to get there like I probably knew when I was very young eventually I'd start taking steroids which obviously I did then but I didn't until I was like 23 stayed natural, done it right, et cetera, et cetera. I've spoken about this before, but I always had that like image of like a physique that I wanted to look like. And I always wanted to push it to kind of those extremes. And that's what really kind of got me into, got me into bodybuilding pretty much. So yeah, pretty long-winded answer there, but it is what it is. Um, next question kind of goes off the back of that last question. Do you feel like people on the outside looking in uh, misunderstand bodybuilding? So yes, like this is, Super common. Um, I think like a lot of people look at bodybuilding as like very narcissistic and egotistical and stuff. And I mean, it is to a certain extent, like nobody bodybuilds like not to look good. Like everybody does it because they want to look good. But at the same time, bodybuilding at a like high level, being egotistical or being vain only gets you so far if you want to be like a top bodybuilder. Like top bodybuilders are like mega disciplined, a lot of them are like super nice people. They're actually not very egotistical. Um, so I think, you know, people can really misunderstand what like bodybuilding is about. I think it's about that kind of like constant like want to progress. And I find that a lot of people who are like 
really good bodybuilders are also like really good at business or like really good in other aspects um, of their life. So bodybuilding can help with a lot of things just outside of like how you look. People definitely do misunderstand it. You know, they just see it as glorified beauty pageants. I know that's what a lot of my, my family, my extended family, aunts and uncles and stuff would think. They just hate bodybuilding, don't like the tan, the tongs, the bikinis, etc. Just think it's a lot of people starving themselves because they're all they're all vain, but that's not really, really what it's about. You know, it's about challenging yourself, it's about pushing yourself, it's about the discipline, it's about like living that kind of lifestyle. And not many people can do that. I think that's why people kind of kind of bash bodybuilding. It's like a lot of these people bash bodybuilding, but it's like you try and do it. You know, even a lot of other sports at like a, a very high level, people get a break from those sports. You know, even if you're like a fucking professional soccer player, right? And you're playing in the Premier League, there's gonna be a period of a couple of months a year where like you're not playing in the Premier League, you don't have matches, you have time off, you can go on holidays, you can eat whatever you want to a certain extent. Like bodybuilders don't have that. Like it is 24 seven, it's 100% commitment. It's a lifestyle choice um, and not a lot of people can do that, like I said. So definitely very misunderstood by a lot of people. And I, th I think if people could really see it on the inside or if they did it themselves, they'd have a lot more uh, appreciation for how difficult it actually is. How big of a nerd are you, one to 10? 10, Chloe is saying here in the background. I'm a, I'm a bit of a closet nerd. I feel like in my, in my very early life, I was like a mega nerd when I was a child. And then I was kind of a product of a poor environment, turned into a little bit of a scumbag, lost my way for a while. But deep down, I've always been, you know, a, a little bit of a nerd. So on a scale of one to 10, I'd probably consider myself like, maybe like an eight, I would say. Chloe probably disagrees, but she doesn't have very many nerdy interests. So um, that's probably why she's saying I'm a 10. I'm a 10 in comparison to, to her level of nerdiness. But uh, yeah, like, I, I love a lot of, I suppose, stereotypically nerdy things like, you know, love Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, love all that fantasy shit. Um, I've got mad into like chess lately. Me and Chloe watched The Queen's Gambit there recently, a couple months ago, actually. And then I just was like, I used to play chess when I was younger, I had a board at home. Then I was just like, geez, I haven't played yes, chess in years. Starting an account online, chess.com, flat out playing games, looking up YouTube videos, studying all the openings. The World Chess Championship is on at the moment now, and I've been absolutely glued to it. So somebody actually asked me a question here about my hobbies outside of bodybuilding. I'd say at the moment, playing chess is actually probably uh, one of my biggest hobbies outside of bodybuilding. So yeah, I'd say a lot of people would consider that consider that quite nerdy but uh it is what it is i think it's important to have other hobbies outside of bodybuilding like yes you know bodybuilding 100 percent or not and you have to live the lifestyle etc etc but i think if you've like nothing else that you're interested outside of just bodybuilding then like it's kind of sad to a certain extent you know i'd consider myself someone who's like very interested in lots of things and i suppose that could kind of come into the nerdiness conversation as well like if i if I hear something or if I like don't know something, I'll want to know about it. Like I'll Google it. Like if I hear something on the news and it's about something that's happening in like some country or like whatever the case may be, I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. Why is that happening over there? I'll Google it. I'll be looking at the history of that country. I'll be like looking at all this shit. Like if there's something I don't know, I want to know about it. You know what I mean? I'm, uh, I'm a fountain of useless trivia, so to speak. Are you going to get a tat? So this is something I've been fucking back and forth with for for ages like i've zero tattoos i'd really like to get a couple of tattoos but i'm like so picky what i want and like just so indecisive and stuff like that i, I want to probably just get like a small couple of like tattoos of like writing or like shit like that but um yeah we'll see i just need to pull the trigger and actually do it i feel like once i get the first one out of the way probably just encourage me to get more but um yeah maybe maybe not for now meal plan or macros for prep okay so all day i think meal plan I actually did my last prep um, on macros because my current coach at the time just gave me macros, but I actually found that like towards the end of my prep, I made myself a meal plan and I just stuck to that meal plan because in my mind, it just, it just made more sense, okay? Same foods every single day, there's no variability, you know there's not gonna be fluctuations in your weight. Um, easier to prep, just like less hassle, kind of removes the, like if you're doing macros and you're on prep, right? you're constantly going to be trying to find different tasty meals and things and stuff like that to, you know, try and like hit that craving that you have. 
you're going to be fucking hungry in prep. You're going to have cravings. I think your food focus is going to be higher if you're doing macros and you're trying to fit all these treats and all these different things into your plan than if you're just eating plain chicken and rice. Because if you're just eating plain chicken and rice, like eventually it gets to the stage of, of prep where that is fucking delicious, right? Like it could be plain chicken and rice, no sauce, no seasoning, could have no fucking salt. When you're proper hungry, you're going to eat that and you're going to enjoy it, right? And if you're constantly trying to find something that's sweet or, you know, salty or fatty to try and just like, you know, hit a craving, I think that's going to make your food focus a lot worse because it's moorish, right? You have something that's like really tasty when you're on prep, you're going to want more of that, right? Whereas if you just keep things consistent, same meals all the time, I think adherence is going to be better, your cravings are going to be lower. Um, you know, with macros as well, people can make very poor choices. Perfect example of this, those fucking Aldi and Lidl protein yogurts, those 20 gram protein puddings and stuff like that, right? Full of fucking shit, full of fucking preservatives. Yeah, they taste lovely, I've had them before myself. But if you're on prep, right, and you're fucking four weeks out and you're eating Aldi protein yogurts, that is the biggest waste of your calories of all time. 20 grams of protein, but you're gonna probably have 15 grams of carbs in there full of load of shit, additives and stuff like that, like I said, for the same amount of calories, you could have a big fuck off bowl of Greek yogurt, probably 250, 300 grams with like 200 berries inside that and 20 grams of weight. It would be more protein, it would probably be less carbs and it would be three times, if not four times the volume, probably four times the volume. So like, why does it make sense to just have that fucking protein pudding? Oh, because I like them, it's like, come off it, you know, you're on prep, it's supposed to be fucking hard, eat something that's, you know, going to fill you up a little bit more rather than having stupid protein puddings or, you know, eating fucking bagels instead of eating rice and potatoes and stuff like that, I just, yeah, macros are dangerous, in my opinion, on a prep, I think, you know, a meal plan is much better, it's way more consistent, you just go into robot mode, you know what you need to do, you know what your meals are, you're not opening up my fitness pal 17 fucking million times a day, um, and you just crack on, so yeah, even outside of prep, I think meal plan is, uh, is the way to go for me. It's the hardcore bodybuilding thing to do. So why wouldn't you do it, you know? What is your favorite pose to hit? And what do you think is your best slash strongest pose? I think the answer to both of those questions is probably a most muscular. What do you reckon, Chloe? I like when I hit the bikini pose. Chloe likes when I hit the bikini poses. <laughs> we should layer layer over a cliff like that obviously like when we go to bed in the evening there's like a big fucking mirror um up on the wall and uh like i'd be posing into it all the time and then like obviously chloe's doing her bikini posing at the moment and i uh, yeah, tried a couple of bikini poses one of the days and you know what i actually look pretty fucking good in the bikini poses if i do say so myself so yeah i might put that in a video someday for for the lols but yeah, favorite pose to hit, I think like I, I think I look quite good in the most muscular. I do like really hitting the most muscular. It's an easy pose to hit as well. I love hitting the front double, but I don't feel like it's like my strongest pose. I think it's good. I think it's like up there in terms of my poses, but I don't think it's the strongest by any means. I think my back double, back double isn't like necessarily a pose I particularly like hitting, but I think when I get on stage, it's probably gonna be one of my best poses. Um, yeah, I think there's there's certain poses I, I definitely need to work on as well, like front and back lat spread, probably two of my worst poses, and then my side chest needs a needs a lot of tweaking as well. But we will get there. Favorite bodybuilder and why? Oof, very hard for me to pick a single one. I think I'm going to answer this in like a physique like sort of a way, like favorite bodybuilder, like physique wise, and then favorite bodybuilder to like actually like listen to um, and kind of follow and stuff like that. So. Physique-wise, I absolutely fucking love um, Derek Lunsford and Justin Shire. I think, for me, that is bodybuilding, proportions, small waist, big flare and lats, just really aesthetic looking, just really pleasing to look at. Um, I'm sure anyone who follows me knows I'm not a Nick Walker fan. Yeah, he's a mutant, he's huge and all that, but it's that is not bodybuilding, in my opinion. Like That is the ugliest fucking looking physique of all time. All those dirty varicose veins, from the knee down as well like it's just that's not bodybuilding in my opinion right it's about it's about polish it's about symmetry you know it's about balance and you know overall musculature there's a lot of things that kind of come into it and i think in the ifbb lately we're actually kind of seeing it move more so in that direction again you know even with samson winning the arnold classic obviously he wasn't as 
as big and muscular or he wasn't as like peeled as Nick was but he was certainly like much more like overall I think aesthetic and just better right so they're the bodybuilders I really like physique wise like the likes of Derek Lunsford, Justin Shire, I think Justin Shire is going to make a fucking statement this year really like Hunter Labrada as well and in terms of bodybuilders to like follow like J Justin Shire again love him on the podcast he's like really funny really humorous um, I actually met him in person as well at the Olympia and he was like super fucking super sound super cool to talk to really like Ian Valier as well just think he's like one of the smartest bodybuilders out there uh, because a lot of them are fucking dumb. James Hollingshead as well, if you ever watch his YouTube videos, he's brilliant. I think he kind of says a lot of things that, he's very outspoken about a lot of things that other bodybuilders definitely go through and definitely feel, like thoughts and emotions that they feel, but they don't openly speak about. Um, and I can kind of resonate a lot with a lot of things that, that James said. And uh, he's some, someone else who I met as well and, and was super, super nice and, and super friendly. So they'd probably be, uh, my favorite bodybuilders I, i'm probably missing one or two people but obviously like you know sebum and shit like that but um yeah i'm, I'm kind of picking the open guys these days because that's the that's the direction i'm going if you weren't pursuing bodybuilding what other career path would you choose so i'd probably still be an accountant to be perfectly honest um because you know i went to college for four years spent like two three years doing accountancy exams and i was working that job before i left to, to do coaching full time so like if i wasn't bodybuilding i wouldn't be coaching I don't think, because I don't think you can have a coaching business without having a good physique. Uh, and I'd probably just be stuck in a fucking nine to five that I didn't like. Well, at the time I left, I really hated my role. Do I think there would have been other roles that I would have really enjoyed within accounting or finance? Yes, I definitely do think so. Like I still actually love finance in general and it interests me quite a lot. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a numbers guy it's just like the way i am but um yeah probably probably be doing something in, in finance or accountancy still to be perfectly honest but uh i'm glad i'm not because i think now that i've been working for myself for quite some time i would fucking hate to go back to working for someone else i just i just don't like listening to people or taking orders from people especially people who i consider to be kind of incompetent um at the best of times and working with other people in like a, a team and you know everyone has to be fucking pally pally friendly friendly and i'm just like this person is a complete fucking retard like how am i supposed to be nice or, or talk politely to this person when they're doing my fucking heading but uh yeah sweet or savory savory all day um even though in my last prep I, I don't really have much of a sweet to and in my last prep for some reason when, when it started to get towards the end and i was uh getting a lot hungrier I had like this massive sweet tooth but again this goes back to like the macros thing at the time i was doing macros and i was fucking getting all these like hartley's jellies in the packet and i was making like a big like two liter full lunchbox of like sugar-free jelly but it was just full of like additives and shit like that and i just eat it in one sitting my stomach would just be fucking blown out and you know it, it would fill me up but it wouldn't satiate my hunger um at all so i kind of fell into that trap and all like you know sweetener drops in like my teas and my coffees and stuff like that drinking tons of monsters drinking tons of fucking pepsis and cokes um just way too much like artificial shite to be perfectly honest so definitely won't be falling into that trap um again this time will i get a sweet tooth towards the end of this prep i don't know i think i'll be able to manage it you know a lot a lot easier but um, I rarely like stray off my plan, you know, at all, like my meal plan. When I do, it's for a savory meal. Like I'll get Nando's I really like, um, the five guys I like. There's a, like a gyro's place over here called Mikos, really like that as well. Um, any other place I've had in Manchester since I came over here has been pretty fucking shite, to be honest. I'm not a big foodie whatsoever. I have zero emotional attachment to food in my opinion it's very easy for me to just just not have off-plan meals and um, if i'm being honest so savory for me the only thing i like is like greasy fatty kind of things if i'm going to eat off-plan i'm going to eat those i never like nibble at anything off-plan like i'll never have a single sweet or a biscuit or if somebody has them out like i just don't touch any of that shit uh, or like crisps or anything like that. i just just don't go near them you know, i'm having a meal or that's it, I'm just following you know, my meal plan. Um, that kind of leads me on to another question that I got off uh, Dono O'Donnell over in Perth, uh, another Art Finning man, fellow Art Finning bodybuilder. I think there's only two of us uh, in the village. So yeah, a big shout out to Dono. Foods you might crave on prep, foods you miss as in takeaways slash fast food, etc. So again, like those 
three places like Nando's, Five Guys and that Mikos place were like the only things I actually don't regret after I've eaten them over here. Um, I get like serious off plan meal regret. It's like, you know, I stray away from my meal plan. I eat this big meal. I spend a fucking fortune on a meal because eating out just costs a fortune as well. I think it's just a bit reckless to be honest, having too many meals out. It's just a waste of money, in my opinion. And then I'll often just be like, well, that wasn't worth it. That tastes disgusting. That made my stomach feel like shit. I wish I just had my chicken and rice at home because I genuinely just enjoy it a little bit better. So again, I, I, I'm not a big foodie. I have very little like emotional attachment to food. Even like the whole social aspect of going out and getting food, I don't really care about that either. I know that sounds terrible. Um, like it's grand if I'm like just with Chloe, but like going out in big groups for me sometimes with a lot of people, I'm just kind of like, uh, it's just like a little bit of hassle, you know what I mean? So um, sometimes I just prefer fucking ordering a guy around here and just eating it on my own, you know? And a lot of people say, oh, if you haven't off plan meals, it should be in a social occasion or setting and stuff like that. And I agree to that to a certain extent, but you know, horses for courses, as they say, and different people just like different things. And with me as well, I feel like it's not like Saturday rolls around and I'm like, I have to have an off plan meal. I could just randomly get a craving for something on a Wednesday as I'm walking through town and I'll be like, do you know what? I'll have that and I'll just have it. And just that's the way I do it. So yeah, I won't really miss anything. Um, with what I'll crave, I, I really don't know. Towards the end of my last prep, honestly, weirdly enough, what I was craving was just like fats. I remember at the end of my last prep, um, I was craving like dark chocolate, like avocado, like smoked salmon. Like all these things, these foods, I was like really, really craving because I had been eating them at the start of my prep and then they were pulled out and obviously your fats go super low towards the end of prep. And I had to kind of like pull out my dark chocolate and I had to pull out, you know, the salmon and avocado obviously because they're quite high in fat. Um, and I really missed that. I remember when I did my fat load, I just had like salmon for like three, four days straight. I spent a fortune. I was eating like four salmon darns a day because um, I just really love salmon. And uh, yeah, I feel like things like that are what I like crave more so than anything i won't be like geez i love a fucking five guys even though i might like you know but i think it would be more so like actual food because that's what i craved the last time i was like i just want to eat more food i don't want to like have a mcdonald's or have this or have that i was like i just want more of the foods i know i like on my plan you know because my calories were low um so yeah that's pretty much it what is your current split right so I think this question can kind of be answered in twos because Ryan actually asked me a question as well saying what is my most improved body part this off season so I'll go over the split and then I'll go over what I think my most improved body parts are as well so my split is push pull chest and arms legs and then I'll do two rotations of that right so I did do push pull rest legs rest and repeat two rotations when I first started Bakuba I would have ran that for around maybe six months and I think I knew starting with Kuba anyway what my weaknesses were. I, need, I knew I needed more chest. I knew I needed more arms. Uh, and I just needed muscle everywhere. But in particular, those two areas, right? Um, because it was very evident to me the last time I was on stage that, that they needed to come up. And we just ran with like the push-pull leg split for the first couple of months. And Kuba could kind of see the way my body was reacting. Like my legs were growing quite a lot. Like everywhere else was kind of growing. But those areas weren't growing as much. So we moved on to that kind of push-pull chest and arms legs split. Um, and we were doing like a chest movement um, for those chest and arm days, probably for the majority of the time, or probably for a year um, of that whole time, every single chest and arm day was just like chest and arms, right? Whereas now it's almost like a push day, like I've one chest and arms day that's kind of like chest and arms, and the other chest and arms day is actually shoulders, it's a shoulder focus, um, because we just adapted things over time. As my chest came up, I was kind of like saying, oh, I think my shoulders are actually after getting a little bit weak now, when traditionally for me, they'd always been quite a strong body part, even when I was natty. Um, so we've just, you know, switched the volume around a little bit. But the frequency of that has also like changed quite a lot. So I would have started off doing two on, one off, like push, pull, rest, chest and arms, legs, rest, and then push two, pull two, etc., etc. Then we kind of changed that around. I was doing like a push, pull, rest chest and arms legs rest rest so i was resting two days of the weekend and then it was kind of having some issues with that we moved on to like one on one off for a while and to be honest the one on one off style of training actually like seen me make a lot of progress and the frequency of that is like super low a lot of people are thinking what you train you train a day you have a day's rest i did that for 
months um and my last push-up was probably like my most successful yet so you know i think frequency is important volume is important but only doing in the gym what you can recover from is also important and over the last two and a half years of an off season i've had obviously i've grown shit loads of muscle but my strength has also come up so much that my recovery you know demands have have completely changed in comparison to like what they would have been when i was smaller and i was i was weaker um or whatever right at the moment now we're back to kind of training four days a week i'll do like push rest pull rest chest and arms legs rest and repeat so what do i think my most improved body part has been so obviously with that split the focus was bringing up the chest and the arms i certainly think they have come up a lot but equally at the same time when i look at my overall physique I think that like my back has probably come up the same amount as my chest and arms have. You get me? Even though I've been training at like half with half as much volume, which is quite funny. So it just goes to show that like I needed that extra volume. I needed that e extra frequency just for my chest and arms to come up as much as my back. And even when I look at my overall physique, especially from when I started my off season to now, if I was to say single out any body part and say, what do I think is the most improved? I actually think my legs are the most improved. Like my quads, my, glute, my glutes and my hamstrings have just fucking doubled in size in comparison to everywhere else. And I kind of attribute a lot of that down to the kind of execution in my training. Um, when I look at my legs now in comparison to, to where they were, they've definitely improved more so than anywhere else, I think. Not to say that everywhere else hasn't improved a lot, but I think my legs are probably my most improved body part. Um, and then after that, maybe like, maybe my chest, even though I don't know, my back has come up a ton. Everywhere's kind of coming up relatively evenly, but I think the legs just a touch more. What was the hardest part of taking a long off season? Oof. I don't know. I feel like it kind of got a little bit harder towards the end than it was at the start because I was so like driven to make progress. When I stepped off stage the last time, I knew I was like, right, this is going to be a really long off season. But... I have to attack this with a sense of urgency as if every single day is like my last day to make progress. And I think that's why I've made as much progress as I actually have. Like I really, really did treat that off season like a prep. And shortly after I started with Cuba as well, like I obviously was kind of just starting to see Chloe at that time too. And Chloe was, did like two preps that year. So I was spending a lot of time with Chloe she was literally on prep for like the first fucking seven or eight months of our relationship. So we never went out for meals. Our whole life revolved around, you know, going to the gym or doing cardio or whatever the case may be. And I absolutely loved that at the time because it kept me super locked in and it kept me super accountable to like my like off season. I remember going like two months in the summer, in the middle of the summer, without even having an off plan meal because Chloe, Chloe was on prep and I was just eating all my meals and she was just prepping so she couldn't have any meals. and. You know, Everton was just like militant and I kind of carried that momentum through with me uh, for, you know, the off season as well. Obviously moving over here then was like a, a big kind of change and a shift. And I think once I got into a new gym here as well, um, it made things a little bit easier because the training was much better. It was a level up, the equipment was much better, et cetera, et cetera. So knowing that the off season was so long wasn't actually difficult for me because I like treated it very seriously. Every week had urgency. Um, I think the hardest part of the long off season was almost like the end of it, the like off season fatigue. I feel like there's only so long you can just like bulk and bulk and bulk and gain weight for it and gain weight for it before like you kind of hit a ceiling almost. There's only so long that you can like push up for and push up for. Um, and I know I did mini cuts along the way to like reset my appetite or whatever, but without doing like a proper diet and a proper prep to like really get lean. And like, if anyone's done a prep before, you'll know that when you diet down to that extreme and you're effectively kind of starving yourself afterwards, your hunger hormones and your hunger singling is like all over the place and you're hungry for months, right? No matter what you eat, even if you're shoving your face full of calories every single day, you're still like really hungry. And obviously I spent like very little time. I think I spent 20 weeks out of my entire, like, you know, two and a half years away from, away from stage um, in like dieting phases. Every other time I was just like shoving, you know, food into me. I was in a calorie surplus. So 
it's very very difficult to do that for like a long you know space of time obviously it's paid dividends it's paid off but i feel like i really need this prep now to like really drive me into the ground like strip me down like strip off all the body fat have a super lean set point you know get my hunger up really high and i think the rebound off the back of that is is going to be immense i don't think i will ever do that long of an off season again i don't think i'll ever take three years in between shows i think from here on out it's going to be a lot shorter and i think one of the big reasons for that is because i've what i've mentioned before i think it would probably be a little bit better for me to compete a little bit more frequently to kind of keep myself a little bit fresher and keep everton kind of firing um a little bit more last question we will wrap this up here even though i have a couple more but this has gone on for quite some time so this is from ryan again how will this prep be different from the last prep Ooh, so this will be very different from the last prep. I feel like in my last prep, I kind of coached myself for a lot of it. And if I'm perfectly honest, if people have followed me for, for quite some time, they probably know who my last coach was, but I just feel like at the time I was pretty happy with the prep and I was kind of happy with how I looked on stage, but looking back in it and you know reviewing photos and reviewing different things and especially the stage photos, um, I just didn't look as good on stage as I think I should have. Um, even though I was pretty happy with the result, I think I was super flat on stage. I think the peak was very wrong. Um, I was like very fatigued coming into it. I'd done a ton of steps and stuff the day before the show, which really blurred the lines of my legs. My carb load was basically, it wasn't a carb load. I had like an extra like 320 grams of carbs over like two days on top of like where my baseline food was. And my baseline food was like super low. I think my carb load was like, 450 carbs followed by 360 carb and then back to baseline it was fucking nothing i don't even think it brought me up to maintenance so and then i took like these natural diuretics these like redcon one waterboards and i just feel like that flattened me out a ton and i, I just just didn't look great um on stage to be honest so it's going to be very different with kuba's approach this time um the length of the prep is going to be similarly the same but obviously i started leaner i know i'm going to have be have to like come down a little bit slower Kuba's going to feed me right up into the show, probably for a good length of time, about 10 days. Um, there's going to be more drugs in play this time. Obviously, I'm going to have a lot more muscle. I'm a lot more confident in what I'm bringing. You know, last time was just first time around. Didn't really know what to expect. Um, but yeah, this prep will be very, very different. And I'm more confident that it's going to be like managed to a T. I I think as well, having done that long off-season with Kuba, he knows my body like inside out. He knows my body really, really well. And um, especially over the last kind of six to eight months, he's really been like micromanaging things like very, very well uh, with me. So I have full confidence in him to, to bring the best possible look that I can bring. Uh, and I'm super fucking excited for, for what is to come. So yeah, buzzing. Actually, I'll do one more question because I think this is, a, this is a, an important one to answer. Um, what shows am I doing? Okay, so my plan of action for shows is going to be Kuba's show, MK Classic, show number one, on the 2nd of September. Um, I'm going to do the novice bodybuilding category, and I'm also going to enter the open category. So I'm going to see how I get on in the heavyweights. I'm going to step on stage in the big boy heavyweight category, and I'm going to see how much muscle I need to build to actually be competitive there. I don't think I'm going to be at the bottom of the class. I don't. I genuinely don't. I think my shape and structure... Is too good i think i'm going to be very very peeled because i know um work ethic wise and genetic wise i'm going to be able to get in super fucking good condition um it's just the size that that i'm going to lack so you know i think the shape and structure and the condition will only carry me so far do i think they probably matter a little bit more than size in some cases yes but you know i i think I might be way off when it comes to size in, in doing very well in the heavyweight categories. But we'll see. I just don't know. I still have no fucking idea what I'm going to look like. Even right now, I'm a lot heavier than I actually anticipated I would be at this body composition. So, you know, things are looking pretty positive. Um, after the MK Classic, that's in Wigan coming back to Manchester the next day. I'm going to do the PCA Manchester. So I'm going to do the novice bodybuilding category there as well. And then we are going to fly to Italy, I think, the following week. So... A big part of this season for me was wanting to do a show abroad, right? And wanting to do a pro qualifier. So the Italy show obviously is going to be the week after already doing two shows. And then the next show I'm going to do is the PCA Ireland, which is on the 17th of September. So that's four shows, three weeks, back to back. Logistically, even traveling to all those places, bringing all my shit with me, whatever, it's going to be a fucking nightmare. It's going to be very stressful, but we're going to get it done. 
right? And because the PC Ireland show is important for me to do as well. I want to go back to Ireland. I want to make a fucking statement. Uh, I want to smash some cunts up um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, see how I get on there. So the Italy show, you know, I think, don't know what the standard's going to be like. Um, I've heard it's a really nice place where it's on. And I think a show abroad will be good, pro qualifier again, so the standard should be obviously much better than like local regionals here, probably the novice category there and the heavyweights, and again, see how far I off, off, I, off I am from people who are actually going for, for pro cards, because that's my long-term goal. And uh, yeah, I think they're my, that's my plan for now. It may change, like the pro qualifier um, may change. You know, there's France on the 30th of September, so I could potentially do that instead of doing, you know, the, the Italy show and just kind of, you know, focus on the Ireland show in between the, the first two shows. But look, we, we'll see what happens. We'll see how I'm feeling and what I look like, um, you know, before the first show and we'll kind of make those, those concrete decisions then after that. But uh, yeah, someone asked me a question as well. Am I nervous for your show? Absolutely fucking not. I don't feel the nerves whatsoever i don't have massive expectations i think in the novice category i think you know if i'm if i'm as good as i know i can be um, and obviously no absolute freaks show up i think i should be able to win all of those i'm hoping in the heavyweight class three category you know don't have crazy expectations there you know um i don't think i'm going to be in top three at any of them at all to be honest but uh we'll, we'll see you know as long as i'm not dead last then uh that's going to be that's going to be good but uh yeah, I will uh, wrap that video up here, guys. It's probably going to be a little bit of a long one. That clip was eight minutes and the last one was 30 minutes, so I might have to couple, cut a couple of questions off. But if you made it this far, appreciate the fuck out of you. Thank you for watching. You're the real MVPs. Uh, you're the real subscribers. And if you're not a subscriber and you've made it this far and you've watched this video and you've listened to me ramble, then fucking hit the subscribe button down below. Drop the video a like. Share it with your friends. Drop me a comment. You know, all the good stuff. And I uh, will catch you in the next one.